everyone. Thanks so much for joining me as we journey down the mole road. We're applying molarity this time to reaction stoichiometry. So we have a compound. This is a very common technique used to standardize sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide tends to suck up water. So when we um, make, you know, mass out the sodium hydroxide to make our solution, uh, it's not always a very accurate solution because that those little pellets of sodium hydroxide grab onto water very, very quickly. And so we standardize it with a crystal that can be dried to a very, very high degree of purity. And that's potassium hydrogen phthalate, often called KHP. Now that's not a potassium and a hydrogen and a phosphate. It's a potassium hydrogen phthalate. It's a very large molecule with a molar mass of 204.22. So the question tells me I have 0 0.688 grams of potassium hydrogen phthalate. And our goal is to find the molarity of our sodium hydroxide. Now, to find molarity of sodium hydroxide, we need two pieces of information. We need moles and we need liters of the sodium hydroxide solution that was used. Now, we have the liters. We can convert 35.43 milliliters to liters by multiplying by its appropriate conversion factor. I caution you against shifting decimal places. I know a lot of teachers like to teach it, but I personally require all work. College Board requires all work. IB requires all work. And that may include showing that. Additionally, students tend to shift the wrong direction. You're tired when you're taking tests. Your mind is running all over the place. And it's too easy to make careless errors. So set up the work. Take those extra few seconds. So I have the liters. So my issue is my moles. So if I can go mass to moles using molar mass, then moles to moles, fortunately it's a nice easy one-to-one -one mole ratio, then I'll have my moles of my sodium hydroxide. I have my liters, I'll have my moles, I can calculate molarity. So let's jump into our little mole road. This time we only have two steps, so it's not um, too bad in that sense. So we have 0 0.688 grams of my KHP. That's just an acronym, not a chemical formula. I want to get rid of grams of KHP, and I want moles. The molar mass is given. Often it's given. Once you've done it a few times, problems will give molar masses because we're really interested in higher knowledge at that point. Then I want to get rid of moles of KHP and I want moles of sodium hydroxide. And that happens to be a one-to-one -one mole ratio, which is really nice about titrations is they do tend to be one-to-one -one mole ratios. Check to make sure your units cancel. And we are left with moles of NaOH. And if you calculated that, you would get 3 point, oh, assuming I did my algebra right, times 10 to the minus 3 moles divided by our 0 0.03543 liters. And I get 9.5. Okay, I... Um, Let's uh, take this out another sig fig. I don't remember what that other digit is. I glanced up here, and this does not dictate our significant figure. This has three sig figs. This has four sig figs. That 25 mLs there is not part of the calculation. We just dissolved the potassium hydrogen phthalate in that. Um, what's key is the grams of potassium hydrogen phthalate. That's why you can rinse down the flask with more water um, during your titration because the volume is not critical. If you don't change the mass, you don't change the moles of potassium hydrogen phthalate. And that does not alter your calculation. So honestly, I don't know what that digit is, but you really should have three significant figures here. And that would give us our molarity of our sodium hydroxide. 
So thank you so much for joining me in this quick little application of molarity to stoichiometry. Take care.